Hi, I'm Vic, and welcome to Geeko Farm, where we do things differently. But first, I'm gonna have a shower, a shave, and a sh- It's about time I made a loaf. Now, I use a bread maker, and people think that's a horrendous cheat, um, and it is, but it makes really good bread. So, what you will need to make a really good loaf, weighing 750 grams, which is about, what is it, one pound 12 ounces in old money. Uh, you will need your bread maker. You will need some baker's yeast. And it's best that you buy all this baking stuff in quantity from a commercial supplier, one that supplies bakers and shops and restaurants and so forth. All right, I use scales. Do everything by weight and just sort of chuck it all in. I don't need specific measuring equipment. So one good spoonful of yeast. Uh, I am making a quick loaf. If I was making a loaf that was gonna sit there overnight, I'd only use a little spoonful. Okay, next thing, flour. For your, fl oh, one moment. I'm getting some reports of live research on yeast from Vic in our Wellington studio. Over to you, Vic. Here we are in Wellington, doing some research. We have decided that the weather is too wet and windy in Wellington to do serious research, so instead we have come to the Rogan Vagabond to research the wonders of yeast. To the wonders of yeast. And thank you, Vic. Right. Strong bread flour. You want to look on the back and look at the protein levels. Where are we? Now, protein levels, 11 grams of protein per 100 grams of flour, except no less. We also use rye flour, as we'll see in a bit. In days of old, when knights were bold, they used a mix of rye and wheat flours called molsin. This actually makes a very good, tasty loaf that tends to rise extremely well, despite the rye flour. So, use roughly one third rye. Uh, the flavour of rye flour is not as strong as the flavour of a rye meal. They are different things. So under all the mess there, as you can see, 92 grams of rye flour. Now, I make it up to 450 grams using strong white flour. You can put in as much salt as you like. Yeah, that's about right. You don't have to put salt in at all, but if you do, it tastes a lot better. Okay, now sugar. I'm making a quick loaf, so I put in a generous heap of sugar. I only put in half that when I'm making it overnight. Next step, olive oil, 30 mil, which is pretty much 30 grams. And that, brings the weight in there up to pretty much half a kilo. Here we are, that's a half kilo of goodness. Now we're gonna put in some water. This needs 300 mils of water. Now, because I'm making a quick loaf, I'm actually using warm water. And all I have to do, I don't need a measuring jug, just make sure that the whole thing weighs 800 grams when I'm finished. Are oh, these measurements are, oh, you know, give or take 10 grams. I've been using this venerable old Panasonic for over a decade. I think I've cleaned it four times. Yeah. Um, here she goes. They still make this model, by the way, but they've turned the baking pan around by 90 degrees. Same control mechanism, makes wonderful bread. So, we now select the size for this bread maker, which is really big. This is a large, not extra large loaf. And my good lady, who must be obeyed, prefers a light crust. And we then select the, oops, we select mm -hmm. the fast option. And then we start it. And I end up with a loaf in two hours time. That will be better than anything you get off the shelf. I see from the debris trail 
that the loaf has been discovered. Demolition team has done a good number on it. Yeah, good bread though. Mmm, looks good enough to eat. People like their fancy bread. So to make one of those, uh, we start off by sticking about mm, half of oats and then we add a lot of uh, uh, kibbled wheat. Yep, this stuff. You get it from sort of those places that sell stuff in bulk bins. And, uh, oh yeah, kibbled rye. Yep, that's another good one to add in there. We, we like the, the little linseed down here. Um, also, uh, pumpkin kernels and... Uh, good old sunflower seeds, they go really well in there. There's no particular recipe, you just uh, mix them up to suit. Make the kind of size loaf I make, you get yeah, one half cup of that, and that goes in the jug, more or less. And then you have half a cup of water, which goes in there like that. And then a pinch of salt. My God, this is difficult left-handed if you're a right-hander. There we go, like that, a little shake. Now you can leave that for a few hours or you can be a lazy bugger and you can put it in the microwave for a minute. We've got the same old yeast, rye flour, white flour, and all the rest of it, including the water in the bread maker here. But what we've also got is porridge from the microwave. Now all we have to do is take that and put it, Whoa. All we have to do is take that and put it in there. It doesn't matter if it's warm because the yeast is on the bottom. There we go. And then we cook that just the same. And that is tomorrow's breakfast and sandwiches taken care of. And lo and behold, next morning, there we are, one loaf. Right, now these are nice and fresh. The only way to actually cut them is to use one of these, otherwise they'll just turn into a squidgy mess. All right. Oh, some magic beans and visit the toaster. Personally, I like them to set up for a day or two I like them firm, but Suz prefers it fresh. So, generally, we eat it fresh. Toast is better the next day, though, eh? Got to remember that this stuff is a bit more substantial than shop-bought bread. So you don't need quite so many slices of it. Just a moment. I'll get this one up to Suz. I hope you enjoyed that little insight into how we make our daily bread. For now, that's your lot. Down on Geeko Farm.